Hello, welcome back. In the last video, we had a look at how sex determination is strictly chromosomal. We also considered a plausible genetic explanation for the wider variability in traits within the male population. And at the end of that video, I said that this process sometimes produces individuals who were exceptions. Things can go wrong. And this is the topic of today's video, so let's begin. There are several ways to approach this topic. The two most common approaches are the ideological approach, often taken by some feminists and also YouTubers such as ContraPoints, or we could take the scientific and clinical approach. It will come as no surprise that in this video we shall set aside the ideological and take a more informed approach. But before we do, there are several misconceptions that need to be dealt with first. The first misconception is that it is only now that biologists and geneticists are finally getting the grips with the issue of sex determination in humans, and that such knowledge is somewhat tentative. There is also a misconception that there is a lack of consensus within the field when it comes to certain matters. Both these claims are ill-founded. The modern understanding of sex differences can be traced back to the late 1940s, and in 1959, the carrier type of Kleinfelter, a male who is XXY, and Turner, a female who had a single X chromosome, was discovered. Both chromosomal combinations became known as syndromes, which we will look at later. But the main point to be made here is that it became clear at that time that it was the presence or absence of the Y chromosome that determined sex, because all Kleinfelters that have a Y are male, whereas Turners, who have no Y chromosome, are females. So the simple fact that the presence or absence of a Y chromosome determined male sex has been known since the late 1950s. It was also established that it was not the number of X chromosomes that were of significance, but rather the presence or absence of the Y chromosome itself. What is true, however, is that in the last decade and a half, there has been an explosion in the genetic knowledge of sex determination, and this has greatly informed clinical practice. Terms such as intersex and hermaphrodite have fallen out of use, making way for specific genetically related named conditions. This change in medical practice has been largely welcomed by intersex individuals because they can see the benefit of such an approach. Indeed, Cheryl Chase, founder and executive director of the now defunct Intersex Society of North America, has been promoting a more scientific approach for some considerable time. Sadly, some feminists and ideologues take another view. Before we can look at what can go wrong with the process of sex determination, we should take a look at several key stages in the process. We should have some understanding of what needs to happen and in what order for normal development, and this will allow us to better understand the exceptions and how they might arise. We already know that primary sex determination is strictly chromosomal. Indeed, this chromosomal determination of sex applies to all mammals, not just humans. If you recall, we said that females have 44 plus XX chromosomes and males have 44 XY chromosomes. We also noted that the Y chromosome is a crucial factor for determining sex. If you recall, at the end of the last video, I mentioned a particular gene called the SRY gene. This gene is critical for the development of males. Females have a similar region on the X chromosome called DAX1. But before we discuss these, let's have a little Bill Nye style pop quiz. And I'll throw in a couple of curveballs and see if you can guess the sex of an individual given the chromosomal combination. X, 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 Y is male. What about X, O, X, O? Female. What about X, 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 X? Female.
If you ever debated this topic with an SJW, at some point in the conversation, they will throw in XO. XO is just another way of writing X. Both point to Turner syndrome. The presence of a Y chromosome with a functioning SRY gene will result in the development of a male regardless of how many X's you throw into the mix. It's as complicated as that. A zygote with a single X chromosome develops as a female and begins making ovaries, although the ovarian follicles cannot be maintained for the development of a complete ovary, a second X chromosome needs to be present, but the resulting fetus will develop into a female regardless. So the combinations X, XO and XX all result in the development of females. The combination X and XO is often referred to as Turner's syndrome, named after the patient in which it was first observed. Now we come to an important concept. In humans, or any mammal if it comes to that, there is no default state. The formation of ovaries for females and testes for males are both active gene-directed processes. Both develop from a common precursor called the bipotential gonad. The presence of XX or XY determines the branch that development follows. The development of ovaries and testes also contribute to secondary development at later stages. Ovaries and testes are considered dichotomous sex differences, not dimorphic difference. Traits such as body shape, weight and height are dimorphic. Males and females look different physically. The difference between the sexes you might like to consider as statistical or morphological. The presence of functioning testes or ovaries are dichotomous because each is present in one sex but not the other. Secondary sex determination relates to the phenotype or type of body. A male develops a penis and prostrate gland. A female develops a vagina and cervix. Each sex has a set of sex-specific characteristics, such as size, structure and musculature. These secondary sex characteristics are usually determined by hormones secreted from the gonads. Testes masculinizes the fetus and ovaries secrete hormones which feminizes the fetus. However, in the absence of functioning gonads, the female phenotype is generated. Let's consider a, a simplified idealized scheme that describes the differentiation process. If the Y chromosome is absent, the gonads develop into ovaries. The ovaries then produce estrogen, a hormone that enables the development of the malurian duct into the uterus. If the Y chromosome is present, testes form and secrete two major hormones. The first hormone, antimalurian duct hormone, or AMH, destroys the malurian duct, and a second hormone, testosterone, masculinizes the fetus, stimulating the formation of the penis, scrotum, and other portions of the male anatomy. Thus, the body has a female phenotype unless it is changed by the two critical hormones secreted by the fetal testes. Now, I suspect you've already guessed that there are more than a few potential points of failure. There are certain errors that can affect this process. If the testes are poorly formed or do not produce AMH or testosterone in the right amount at just the right time, the fetus is not masculinized and the resulting phenotype will be female. So there can be potential problems that relate to hormonal regulation of the phenotype. There could also be genetic problems, and there are quite a few of these, but we only have time to consider a single typical example that results in phenotypical sex reversal. The gene DAX1 is located on the X chromosome and is thought to contribute to the formation of ovaries. Under normal circumstances, in XY combinations, the SRY gene located on the Y chromosome overrides the DAX1 gene located on the X chromosome. This results in testes and a male phenotype. In XX configurations, there will be two DAX1, one on each chromosome. But as we have discovered, one of these will be deactivated 
This results in development of ovaries and a female phenotype. It has been discovered that sometimes there can be two DAX1 present on a single X chromosome. Now this is a problem where we have an XY configuration because the SRY gene can only override a single DAX1 gene. This results in what is known as gonadal dysgenesis. This means that the gonad is poorly formed. Since the gonad makes neither AMH nor testosterone, the fetus will develop a female phenotype despite being chromosomally male. So there are people whose phenotype does not match the chromosomal sex. But how common is this in reality? This is difficult to determine because these cases will often only be diagnosed genetically. A clinician attending the birth will assign sex entirely on phenotype. The most likely conditions that might be detected are those where the genitalia are ambiguous, making it difficult to assign a sex. In the case of gonadal dysgenesis, the number is estimated at around 1 in every 100,000 births. More common developmental anomalies of the external genitalia might exist in one in every 300 newborn infants. But these include such things as undescended testes or anomalies of the opening to the urethra. These are not really examples of developmental sex disorders, often referred to by the term DSD. The term DSD has superseded the older term intersex. And we should take a look at this classification system. There are three clinical classifications of DSD, and they are Category A is primarily dealing with genetic anomalies, like Kleinfeld syndrome and Turner syndrome. Category B is virilization issues, and Category C is inadequate production of particular hormones, which leads to the undermascularization or the underfeminization of the fetus. There is an interesting Daily Mail article that relates to Kleinfelder syndrome. It's an easy read, but it contains copyrighted materials, so I won't reproduce it in this video, but I include a link in the description box below. So that was quite a journey, and of course what we considered was an idealised overview. Very few traits are produced by single genes. We only considered two key genes in this entire video. The same applies for hormones. We only considered two, but there are several more that are involved in complementary processes. But these complexities do not invalidate the general overview that I've presented in this video. Lastly, we shall consider individuals who have sex chromosomes showing male-female mosaicism. These individuals were often referred to as true hermaphrodites. These cases involve an individual who possesses both the male XY and female XX chromosomes. Most often, but not always, the chromosome complement is 46XX. And in every such individual, there also exists evidence of Y chromosomal material on one of the autosomes. Individual with a 46XX chromosome complement usually have ambiguous external genitalia with a penis and are therefore often reared as males. However, they later develop breasts during puberty and may even menstruate. And in very, very rare cases, they may produce sperm. Historically, if diagnosed at birth, the choice of sex was made based on the condition of the external genitalia. The genitalia often needed to be reconstructed to resemble those of the chosen sex. The reconstruction of female genitalia is more readily performed than the reconstruction of male genitalia. So historically, ambiguous individuals were often made to be female. However, intersex surgery has long-term consequences for the affected individuals. Later in life, for example, the person may not be satisfied with the result of the surgery and may not identify with the assigned gender. Thus, patient consent rather than parental comfort has become an increasingly important part of decisions about intersex surgery. Today, such surgery may be delayed until adolescence or adulthood so that the patients have sufficient time to consider their gender and are able to make informed decisions about treatment. In these older individuals, the accepted gender may be reinforced by the appropriate surgical procedure and by hormonal therapy. We end our adventure at this point. I hope you found something of interest in this video. 
If you would like to support my channel, I now have a Patreon page. If you're unable to support my work through Patreon, then you can share, like, or comment. It's all good. Thank you for watching.